Hi, my name's Audrey Faye Weiber and today I'm going to read you Jonathan cleaned up, then he heard a sound. Jonathan's mother went to get a can of noodles. She said, Jonathan, please don't make a mess. When she was gone, Jonathan stood in the middle of the apartment and looked at the nice clean rug and the nice clean walls and the very, very clean sofa and said, well, there is certainly no mess here. Then he heard a sound. It was coming from behind the wall. He put his ear up against the wall and listened very carefully. The noise sounded like a train. Just then the wall slid open and a subway train pulled up and stopped. Someone yelled, last stop, everybody out. Then little people, big people, fat people and thin people and all kinds of people came out of Jonathan's wall, ran around his apartment and went out the front door. Jonathan stood in the middle of the living room and looked around. There was writing on the wall, gum on the rug, a man sleeping on the sofa and all the food was gone from the refrigerator. Well, said Jonathan, this certainly is a mess. Jonathan tried to drag the man out of the door, but he met his mother coming in. She saw the writing on the walls and the gum on the rug and the empty refrigerator. She yelled, Jonathan, what a mess. Jonathan said the wall opened up and there was a subway train. Thousands of people came running through. His mother said, oh, John, don't be silly, clean it up. She went out to get another can of noodles and Jonathan cleaned up. When he was all done, he heard a sound. It was coming from behind the wall. He put his ear up against the wall and listened very carefully. The noise sounded like a train. Just then the wall slid open and there was a subway train. Someone yelled, last stop, everybody out. And all kinds of people came out of Jonathan's wall, ran around his apartment and went out the front door. This time there was ice cream cones and chewing gum on the rug, writing and footprints on the wall, two men sleeping on the sofa and a policeman watching TV. Besides that, the refrigerator was gone. Jonathan got angry and yelled, everybody out. Just then his mother came in. She saw the ice cream cones and the chewing gum on the rug, writing footprints on the wall, two men sleeping on the sofa and a policeman watching TV. A big empty space where the refrigerator had been. Jonathan, she said, what have you done? Then she heard noise that was coming from behind the wall. She put her ear right against the wall and listened very carefully. The noise sounded just like a train. Just then, the wall slid open and a subway train pulled up. Someone yelled, last stop, everybody out. And all kinds of people ran out of Jonathan's wall, wall, ran around his apartment and went out the front door. There were ice cream cones, chewing gum, and pretzel bags on the rug, writing and footprints and handprints on the wall, five men sleeping on the sofa. Besides that, a policeman and conductor were watching TV and the fridge and stove were gone. Jonathan went to a conductor and said, this is not a subway tracing station, this is my house. The conductor said, if the subway stops here, then it's a subway station. You shouldn't build your house in a subway station if you don't like it going to City Hall. So Jonathan went to City Hall. When he got there, the lady at the front desk told him to see the subway bus. The subway bus told Jonathan to go see the mayor. So he went and saw the mayor. The mayor said, if the subway stops there, then it's a subway station. You shouldn't build your house near a subway station. Our computer said it's a subway station, and our computer is never wrong. Then he ran out to watch. In fact, 
everybody ran out for lunch, and Jason was all by himself at City Hall. Jason started to leave, but on his way out, he heard sounds. Someone was crying, ooh, I'm hungry. Jason listened very carefully. He walked up and down the hall and found the room he was coming from. He went in and there was a big, enormous, shine computer machine. The computer was going wig wig, clunk clunk, clickety clang, and its lights were going, going off and on. The voice was coming from behind it. Jason squeezed in the back of, squeezed in the back of the machine and saw a little old man with a very messy desk. The man looked at Jason and said, "Do you have any blackberry jam?" "No," said Jason. "But I could get you some. Who are you?" "I'm the computer," said the man. Now, Jonathan was no dummy. He said, "Computers are machines, and you are not a machine. They go wig, wig." Her clunk click as he clang. The man pointed at the big computer and said, Well, that thing never did work. I do everything for the whole city. Oh, said Jonathan, I will get you some blackberry jam if you'll do me a favour. A subway station is in my house at 980 Young Street. Please change it. Certainly, said the old man. I remember doing that. I didn't know where to put it. Jonathan ran out and passed all the officers with nobody in there. He ran down the stairs and all the way to a jam store. He got four cases of jam. It took him three hours to carry it all the way back to City Hall. There was still nobody there. He carried the jam back behind the computer and put it on the floor. Now, said the old man, where am I going to put this subway station? I don't know. I know, said Jonathan, and he whispered in the old man's ear. Then he left, but the old man yelled after him. Don't tell you when the computer is broken, the mayor would be very upset. He paid $10 million for it. When Jonathan got home, his mother was still standing on the rug because she was stuck to the gum. Jonathan started washing the writing off the wall. He said there will no there will be no more subways here. And he was right. The end. And that's the end of that book.